<laughs> Those who proposed and supported it, as I did, wanted to argue that it would be a huge benefit to humanity. When in fact, it probably wouldn't have made all that much difference. It was symbolically very important, and I think, I wish it had passed. Um, but we had Title VII that prohibited employment discrimination, and we had Title IX that uh, prohibited uh, educational discrimination. Um, and the opponents of the Equal Rights Amendment had these horror stories about what awful calamities would result if the Equal Rights Amendment became law. And they were hooey, in my opinion. Uh, just really uh, terrible scare tactics. We would never have anything like that today. <laughs> I contrasted that with the, the, the debate between another issue that was relevant in that class, and that was choice versus life. The pro-choice movement uh, versus the pro-life movement, which I think both sides were right and continue to be right. Um, that, that people of good conscience can easily come to either view or the myriad views in between uh, with intellectual honesty and, uh, uh, and, uh, and really good faith. And, and that's what I would liken tonight's discussion to. Uh, an issue where both sides are at least to a significant degree, right. And so as we approach the issues, uh, hopefully that'll help us um, uh, keep our, our uh, eyes on the prize and, and, uh, uh, and, the, and the discussion respectful of all. Okay, are we ready to jump in? Sorry for that wall of words. Um, I uh, am intrigued by a case an actual case that uh, grew out of a, um, a diversity initiative that Hewlett-Packard uh, fostered at their plant. I think it was actually corporate-wide. Uh, but this particular uh, dilemma arose in the Boise uh, Hewlett-Packard plant. And I thought it might be a, a, an interesting way to ground the discussion in the kind of real life uh, situation from which it arises. Hewlett Packard began displaying posters showing photographs of employees with various captions such as black, old, Hispanic, and gay in connection with its workplace diversity program. Diversity is our strength was the title of the, of the initiative. An HP employee by the name of Peterson who was a self-described devout Christian believed that he had a duty, quote, to expose evil when confronted with sin. <laughs> you can see where this may be headed. <laughs> and he allegedly did so by posting biblical scriptures on an overhead bin in his cubicle. Uh, the verses were printed in a very large typeface and were visible to anyone who passed through the adjacent corridor. After the verses were removed, the employee attended several meetings with management where the respective positions were discussed the employee admitted he, con he condemned gay behavior and intended the scriptural passages to be hurtful to gay and lesbian employees in the hope that the messages would cause them to repent and to be saved. He also told management that he felt that the workplace diversity campaign targeted heterosexual and fundamentalist Christian employees and him specifically. Ultimately, the two sides were unable to agree as to how they could resolve the conflict after the employee admitted he would continue to uh, post scriptures if HP continued its diversity program with respect to gays and lesbians, the employer gave him time off to reconsider his decision. However, when he returned to work, he again posted anti-gay Bible verses in his cubicle and refused to admit them, to remove them, I beg your pardon. At this point, he was terminated for insubordination. The employee sued the company in federal district court for a million dollars, alleging religious discrimination in violation of Title VII, as well as the Idaho Human Rights Act, uh, a wrongful termination action in violation of uh, public policy and other state law claims. The district court granted the employer's motion for summary judgment, and the employee appealed the decision to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. So, as I introduce the panel members, um, I'm going to ask them uh, to uh, give their reactions and address 
this issue first off. Uh, first, to your left, Professor Fred Geddix is the Guy Anderson Chair and, the, and a professor of law at Brigham Young University Law School. He joined BYU Law School faculty in 1990 after four years at Mercer University in Macon, Georgia, and a year at the University of Denver. He also <clears throat> has practiced in the area of corporate and securities law and served as a law clerk with this very Court of Appeals when he read the opinion uh, before we began. He said, oh, that's just... Uh, professor Geddix, are we having trouble hearing me? Yeah. I was sort of hoping that we wouldn't need to use it because uh, we only have one mic. Okay, sorry, we'll just pass this back and forth then. Um, Professor Gaddix earned his undergraduate degree from BYU and earned his law degree at the University of Southern California. Uh, next to him is Reverend Claudia Siter. Reverend uh, Siter is the priest of the St. Michael's Episcopal Church in Brigham City. She previously served as a deacon and associate rector at the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd here in Ogden. Reverend Sider recently retired after 35 years of teaching AP U.S. History and World History at Layton High School in Layton, incidentally. She earned, <laughs> she earned her undergraduate degree here at Weber State University and her master's degree from Utah State University and has done postgraduate work at Harvard and at Indiana University. Oh. <laughs> okay. Reverend Teresa Novak is a minister of Uta Unitarian Universalist Church of Ogden and has been, a lead has been leading that congregation since 2007. She received her Master's of Divinity from Star King School for the Ministry. Reverend Novak is a native of California and earned her undergraduate degree and graduate degree both from the University of California at Berkeley. It's probably explained something. <laughs> Before entering the seminary, <laughs> Reverend Novak worked for the Social Security Administration Which for 25 years. And by way of uh, disclaimer, or, or, or uh, caveat perhaps, better said, uh, Reverend Novak and I worked together uh, on a program that the Unitarian Universalist Church started here in Ogden five years ago called Outreach Resource Center, oh. a, a support center for, and there are some other uh, volunteers from that organization here tonight for uh, GLBTQ uh, youth, and now adults as well. Uh, we meet three nights a week, and um, uh, it's been a wonderful collaboration. We actually meet in the church basement. Uh, professor Clifford Roski is an associate professor of law at the University of Utah, uh, J.S. Quinney School of College of Law. And before joining uh, the law faculty there. He served as a research fellow for the Williams Institute on Sexual Orientation and Public Policy at the UCLA School of Law. Who even knew they had one? And served <laughs> as a law clerk with the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. He earned his undergraduate degree from Amherst College and his law degree from Yale Law School. He's currently a member of the Board of Directors of Equality Utah, a gay rights advocacy group uh, here in Utah. Why don't we do this in reverse order? Would you mind starting us off? Here you go. Planning to shout, but I guess I'll, I'll use this. Um, so the, the HB case is a fascinating case, which I just learned about 30 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> it's a very interesting case because it really, the truth is that conflicts between religious liberties and civil rights are rare, sort of statistically rare. They don't happen that often. Most people can just get along fairly easily most of the time, and one person's religious rights don't up against someone else's civil rights. Um, I also, the more I thought about it, and I, I may be missing something big here, and I'm sure that uh, my co-panelists and, and the rest of you will let me know uh, that I have, but the more I think about it, the easier the case becomes. Because it seems to me that a company has a right to protect its employees from other employees, and that in this case, the gentleman, um, and I do not doubt the sincerity of his religious views, but he admitted that he was intending to be hurtful to his gay and lesbian colleagues. And that's kind of a non-starter, I would think, in a company. Trying to run a non-religious company for profit, and one employee is trying